magic and magical people, the unnatural order is all around us. There are white witches, black witches, demons, vamps, werewolves, shapeshifters, ghosts. It's a protoplasmic party of creature features out there. But unless you know where to look, you won't find them. I know where to look. My name is Harry Strange. After you've been in my racket for a couple of years, you think you've seen everything. Cheating spouses? Please, that tune got old after six months. Double-crossing partners? The only partners I know who didn't double-cross each other were Marley and Scrooge. I'd seen child abductions, parental abductions, black male, white male, and green male. I'd even seen my share of poltergeist, witchcraft, and demon possessions. But I'd never seen anyone turned inside out before. And let me tell you, brother, that's the kind of thing that'll put you off red meat for a while. It was about three years ago, during the heat wave of 2007. Business had been routine and slow. As a general rule, when a private eye tells you his job is routine, it means it's been cheating spouse week and no one has shot at him. It's the same way in my particular genre, with the added bonus that I haven't turned up any voodoo dolls that look like my clients, or worse, yours truly. Like I said, I'd wrapped up a couple of divorce cases and recovered some stolen property. I would have gone home for the day, except home was here, upstairs in a two-bedroom flat, where no one was waiting for me. Though I'd been married once to the most wonderful woman in the world, I know, every palooka who walks in here with a sob story about their wife says the same thing. It's practically a cliché. Difference was, it was true about my Maddie. I know. They say that, too. A swarthy Eastern European type stole Maddie from me. Mr. Eurotrash was, well, still is, a vampire. It took about a year, but I finally caught up with my Maddie. She was fully vamp by then, and if you'll pardon the expression, out for blood. It broke my heart, but I pumped a clip of silver-filled forty-five slugs into her and then decapitated her with a sort of yarlin. I stuffed her neck with garlic. And, just for good measure, I burned the remains and scattered the ashes in five different church graveyards. I couldn't destroy her head, though. She always had the most beautiful eyes. The Eurotrash boyfriend? Bizarre to say I haven't caught up with him. Yet. Are you Mr. Strange? Mr. Harry Strange? That's what it says on the door, sister. I've heard a lot about you. I believe you will help me. Most people ask if I can help them, not tell me I will. Okay, sister, let's start out easy. What's your name? Lil. Lil was attractive in a Soviet bloc sort of way. Who am I kidding? She was beautiful regardless of where she was from. Her lips were moist, ruby red, and begging to be kissed. She was built like a pinup queen and held herself like royalty. It's been my experience that a bird with looks like hers was always going to be trouble for the sad sack who thought he had her cage. Because you can never cage a woman like her. A man could hold on to her for a while. She'd lull him into thinking she was his. But when she became bored or distracted, she'd move on. And he'd be left as an empty, pathetic husk of a man he once was. I'm sorry, Mr. Strange. Did you say something? What? No, I, I was just thinking. So what is it you believe I may help you with, Lil? My ex-lover stole some very rare and priceless stones from me. I want you to find and return them. When you say them... <laughs> Just the stones. You can leave him where you find him. Did you file a police report? I'd rather keep the police out of this. Why? Did you steal the stones from someone? I never take what isn't freely offered, Mr. Strange. I am, however, involved in a lifestyle that requires a level of... discretion. There are a hundred other guys in this city who do what I do, though not as well, of course. Why me? Two reasons, Mr. Strange. You know to be discreet, and you have an excellent reputation among my people. Your people? These stones have certain properties that I wouldn't trust to just anyone, and certainly not the police. I'm not sure I understand. If it's the money, Mr. Strange, consider your fee doubled. Double my fee? This bird must really need my help. 
I gave her the ones over a second time. Yeah, she had money. Those five-inch designer heels she was wearing probably cost more than my entire suit. Hell, probably more than my entire wardrobe. Mr. Strange, if you're done leering at my cleavage, I would like an answer before you grow too old to do the job. That's not likely to happen. On the surface, her story was a common one. A jilted lover, a stolen object. That the stones possessed some magic properties made it more interesting. Lil didn't go into detail about what those properties were, and I didn't ask. I was bugged by the fact that she could have just as easily gone to the police or some other private dick, left out the part about the magic, and they would have been just as happy to search it out for her. There was more to this story than she was letting on. Of course, among the magic types, there always is. It's not common knowledge, but it's a protoplasmic party of creature features out there. All sorts of nightmare beasties are around us all the time. Most of us humans, however, can't see the reality of what's in front of us because we're too busy seeing the reality we think is there. Lil left a picture of the stones, a picture of her ex, and my retainer. She told me she'd be in touch. I studied the picture of her ex. He looked like a regular working-class schmuck, but how he scored a woman like Lil was the true mystery. The three stones were equally nondescript red stones, each about the size of an eyeball. I was a happy guy, though. This job couldn't take that long. And at double my fee, this would be a good week indeed. I couldn't find any information on the stones. This was looking increasingly like a family heirloom deal. But why pay double the rate to some private dick for something handed down from great-great-grandma? Unless, of course, it was great-great-grandma and one of the stones. Since the search was a bust, I did the thing I always do when I need to find stolen charmed property. I went to see Phineas the Fence. Freaky Finney's place was near the dock. Most things unnatural in nightfalls were by the docks. Smells like human spirit in here. I hate that smell. How about if I rip your nose off again? Would that help the smell? Don't touch me, strange. It took a year for the wounds to heal last time. You're going to get yours, tough guy. And I'm going to laugh when that happens. Yeah, whatever. Take a look at this picture, Finney. Never seen those before. Tell me again why I should help you? Because if I find out you knew something and didn't tell me, I'll come back here with the holy cocktail again. Only this time, maybe I'll pour it down your throat instead of just coating my dagger with it. Right. How did a hairless ape like you become such a problem to a charm like me? Charmed? That's a bit much for... What the hell are you? A gargoyle? Imp? Imp! I hate that void. Would you prefer gremlin? Weasel? Fairy? How about lawn gnome? I would prefer to see your head on a stick And I a... would prefer to be talking to someone who didn't smell like they spent the night on the inside of a rabid Rottweiler. Do you know what these are or not? Hmm. <laughs> Whoa! Strange! Do you know what those are? Yeah, I just came for the witty banner. What the hell do you think I've been asking you? You're right about hell. This is beyond trinket level, Harry. This is serious mojo. And what does that mean exactly? If someone tried to hawk those in here, I'd kill them myself. Then I'd burn the place down. Why? What are they? No. One shouldn't even say its name out loud. The creature carrying those will not be long in this world. Who would he bring it to? Not me. Listen, Strange. Nothing would make me happier than to see you roasting on a spit in hell. But even you don't deserve what the owner of those stones will do if they find them with you. You need to go, Strange. I reached across the counter and grabbed Finney by his scrawny shoulders and pulled him towards me. Up close he smelled worse, like rotting fish that's been laying on a sun-baked beach for three weeks. Tell me what they are. Okay. Let go of me. I'll tell you. I pushed him back against the wall. I'm waiting, Finny. Yeah, well, wait in hell! In all the years I've known Finny, I'd never seen him pull that disappearing act. Whatever these stones were, they had him frightened more than the thought of me coming back with a holy cocktail. With no leads here, I decided to head over to Haxon's. A little darts and a drink would be just what I needed for thinking. From the front, Haxon's looks like an abandoned warehouse. Most humans walk right by it and never see it for what it is. 
a trans-dimensional portal between Earth and a million other realms. I ordered my usual and sat down next to the dartboards. Haxons is neutral territory, and the owners employ the largest grog demons to enforce the neutrality pact. Most humans are not welcomed here. I was one of the lucky ones. If a human stumbled in here accidentally, a complicated cloaking spell would make all the patrons appear to be human biker types, when they were actually other world species who make the cantina scene in Star Wars look like a local Sunday school assembly. Because of my... relationship with the unnatural order, I could see through most cloaking spells. That was one of the reasons I was so good at my job. I had just busted with a trip 13 when who should walk in but the ex-boyfriend. It made sense. You have something magical to sell, and I was sure there was a sale going on. Haxons would be the place to find a buyer. I waited and watched. After ordering a drink and some buffalo wings, he walked past me towards a table near the back. He wasn't any better looking up close, but he did have some wild tribal tattoos coming up from under his shirt. Some type of protection spell, I would guess. A few minutes later, he was joined by a huge man-like thing. Ah, oh, crap. It was an Alfeshni. I hate Nalfs. First off, they're some of the ugliest demons you'll ever see, which is saying something. They're about the size of a gorilla with the head of a wild boar and the disposition to match. The Nalfs sat with the X. If the Nalfs were involved, then Finney was right. These stones were more than just heirlooms. From the body language, it was obvious that some negotiating was taking place. I slid into the booth behind them, hoping to hear the details. I stole a quick glance at the table. There were no stones, but there was a photograph, face down. After a few seconds, the Nalf mumbled something that sounded like where. I was able to make out the word safe, but little else. The Nalf grumbled something in his native tongue, and the X snapped back. Their voices were starting to get loud. It wouldn't be long before one of the security guards came over. Since Haxons was a neutral ground between the dimensions, a place where deals could be made in relative safety, Haxons took security very seriously. Of course, once you stepped outside the grounds, all well, bets were off. I got up to go to the bar and stole a quick glimpse in their direction. They weren't arguing so much as they were negotiating a price. By the time I got my drink and returned to the table, some arrangement had been made. The human picked up his photo, did a little head nod towards the Nalf, and left. After a second, the demon did the same, though he headed for one of the doors in the back. I waited about 30 seconds to make sure the Nalf wasn't coming back, and then I went the same way as the X. It was getting darker when I stepped outside of Haxons. There was a cold wind blowing in from the river, cutting through my clothes and slicing into my bones like shards of glass cutting through paper. Odd, considering how hot it was earlier. The X was about a block ahead of me when I saw him duck into an alley. If these stones were as strong as I was beginning to believe they were, the X was going to start a bidding war for them. He didn't realize that treating magic heirlooms like baseball cards on eBay was frowned on by the unnaturals. It was like how a Catholic would feel about auctioning off the Eucharist. I turned into the alley in time to see four goons with no necks step out of a side door and grab the X. He put up an acceptable fight until one of the goons pulled out a cattle prod and smacked him on the back of the head. The X collapsed like a cheap lawn chair. When he stopped twitching and peeing, the other three goons picked him up and took him into the building. If the X had the stones on him, he wouldn't for long. I needed to keep up with where they went until I could figure out a way to recover them for my client. Of course, I wasn't going to walk into a nest of demons or vampires to do it. I made my way carefully, quietly, through what was probably a receiving office. From all the broken glass and busted office furniture, I was guessing that this place hadn't been officially used in years. I wandered in the dark, catching a whiff of something acidic in the air. Brimstone? There was a light coming from under a door near the back. I put my ear to it. Yep, this is where the X ended up. I found a ladder and made my way up to a catwalk above the room. From my perch, I watched the goons working over the boyfriend. They had a process going that almost spoke to an intelligence beyond their level. One goon, the one who had mastered speech, asked the X a question. When he didn't answer right away, the other three took turns using his head like a whack-a-mole. The high-intensity light bulb hanging freely from an electrical cord over the X's head illuminated the streams of blood running down his face. Even from here, it was obvious his nose was broken and well on its way to becoming a permanently disfigured bag of blood, snot, and cartilage. The good news? 
Well, okay, the better than bad news was that the goons were humans. If they were magic, they would be doing a lot more damage than just some facial reconstruction, and they wouldn't be getting their hands dirty to do it. Their human status also meant they could be taken down easily with my forty-five. This little dance went on for a few more minutes before the talking goon raised a hand the size of a ham hock. He and the other little piglets left the room, probably to talk to whoever was in charge. I didn't see the ex give them anything, and the only thing they took from him was his blood. So I figured if I was going to get the stones, now would be the best time. Up close, the ex looked like a bad Picasso. His nose was practically flattened against his face. Blood was flowing freely from both nostrils. His left eye was swollen shut and his right eye stared into space. I couldn't say for sure if he saw anything. His lip was swollen to the size of a plum. His jaw was angry purple. I needed to get him and the stones out of here. If the goons couldn't beat it out of him, he surely wasn't going to tell me just because of my ample good looks and hypnotic charm. Did you say something? There was a smell in the air that I hadn't noticed before. It was sweet, but there was something underneath. Something that smelled like death, and I had smelled it recently. Lil sent you. Yeah, Chief. Lil sent me. She wants her stones back. Yeah, I know. That sounded a lot better in my head. You've killed me. Not me, Chief. I just followed you here. Every time he spoke, drops of blood sprayed from his mouth. She is watching. Look, give me the stones and I'll get you out of here. I'm never leaving this room alive, and neither are you. If I had a nickel for every time I heard that... Look, friend, there are only three of them. I can take them out while drinking a chai. Tell me where the stones are, and I can get you out into a doctor who will fix you up. But you have to tell me where the stones are. That's all Lil wants. <laughs> Did I say something funny, champ? You don't know Lil. You don't know what she is. She wants me and the stones. Actually, friend, she doesn't want you, and the sooner you accept that and give me the stones, the sooner we can all go home. You are blind. Don't you know who she is? I thought I heard footsteps. Listen, Sparky, someone's coming. Unless you want those goons to finish your nose job, you need to tell me where they are and you need to do it now. It's not. I turned to see the door open. I reached for my holster and drew my forty-five. I didn't want to have a shootout here. I knew I could take out the three goons, but I didn't know how many others were waiting. I stepped to the side of the door. My plan was to wait until all three were in and bust a cap in each of their heads. I leaned against the wall, my forty-five pointing up towards the ceiling. I was close enough to smell the metal of the barrel and the gun oil. The door pushed open, its metal base scratching against the cement floor. Imagine my surprise when... Instead of a pair of black pants and cheap shoes, I saw a pair of five-inch red pumps and legs that seemed to go on forever. Hello, Mr. Strange. She spoke without turning to see me. Lil, what are you doing here? You let her write to me. What an idiot. Lil, this isn't a safe place for you. You really don't know who she is, do you? You're the dumbest human being on the face of the planet. Coming from a man whose face had been reduced to meatloaf made me think he was either delirious or a genius. What are you talking about? She is evil incarnate. Don't be like that, honey. Just because we broke up doesn't mean we can't be friends. Stay away from me, Lil. Shh. Come on, honey. Look what they've done to you. Don't touch me. You, my hammer! Whatever your name is, don't let her touch me. She caressed his face, gently brushing his hair out of his eyes. She took a scarf out of her purse and started dabbing at his torn flesh. They will pay for this, honey. Remember how it used to be between us? I loved you. I still have feelings for you. You don't need to suffer like this. It's only because of the stones. They didn't take them from you, did they? You do still have them, right? The boyfriend said nothing, but he was trying to pull back from her touch. Where are the stones, honey? Please tell me. She moved her hand gently across his face. Then, when she got to the pulpy mess that used to be his nose, she grabbed it between her thumb and forefinger and started to twist. Where are my stones, you worthless little maggot? Hey, what's going on in here? 
Lil, look out. I took aim at the goon, but Lil stepped in front of me. Back, Creighton. I command you. I stood slack-jawed as the talking goon froze where he stood. He looked to Lil, then me, then back to Lil again. The goon looked like a stupid kid trying to solve a math problem. In the next second, he burst into flames. The room quickly filled with the smell of barbecued pork. He ran around in circles, flailing his arms and trying to put himself out. In about a minute, he fell down, tried to stand, and fell again. This time, he didn't get up. His skin was charred and melting in places. He was still burning, but at least he stopped screaming. I looked back and saw Lil hovering over her ex like a buzzard waiting for dinner to die. They're mine. You gave them to me. I gave you a lot of things. The stones were for you only as long as you were with me. When you left, you forfeited all rights to them. Okay, Lil, so you're a high priestess witch. I get it. A witch? Do you see a broomstick anywhere, Mr. Strange? I... I am Lilith, first woman of the Bible, queen of the Gregori, mother of the Nephilim, goddess of the Succubi. Where are my stones, little man? Yeah, right. Those are all that's keeping me alive right now. They will be your death if you don't tell me where they are. Wait a minute, sister. You can't kill him. Oh? And why not? That's not what you hired me for. Strange. You're dumb as a happy meal. She hired you because she couldn't find me. I was cloaked against her. You were not. You led her to me. Wrong, boyo. He led me to the stones. Finding you is just a delightful bonus. You played me for a fool, sister. I don't care which part of hell you're the queen of, no one plays me for a fool. Hold that thought, Mr. Strange. Lover boy, I'm bored now. It's time to give me what is mine. Search his pockets! I already did. I'm not talking to you, Mr. Strange. From the shadows came two misshapen beings. They stood about three feet tall, with claws larger than table saws. Their heads were about twice the size of their bodies. Their mouths couldn't close all the way because of two rows of long, jagged teeth. Get them away from me! <laughs> Relax, darling. They've been fed. The little bald abominations moved so fast it was impossible to watch their claws. After a few seconds, the imps came up empty-handed. I told you, his pockets are empty. He must have dropped them somewhere. No, they are still here. I can smell them. If they are not on him, they are in him. Did you swallow them? He didn't say anything, but the look on his face told me Lil had guessed right. <laughs> you didn't really think that all the way through, did you? The imps drew back, almost disappearing completely into the shadows. At first, nothing happened. All we could hear was the ex's labored breathing. But then... It looked as if he was collapsing in on himself. His chest folded in as if two hands were squeezing it in the way you or I would squeeze a piece of fruit. As we watched, a tear sliced his chest and continued down through his hips. Then, slowly, the tear started to fold out. His ribs opened up like someone prying them apart with a crowbar. The sound of breaking bones and tendons pulling from muscles filled the room. This went on for a long time. I saw veins pulled and stretched until they tore from the stress. As each vein ripped, a fountain of blood jetted out of the new wound. All the time, this poor bastard felt everything. He watched terrified as his insides became his outsides. I was positive it was Lil's magic keeping him alive, because no mortal could live through that. His stomach churned and then tore open, spilling its contents on the floor. In the center of the viscous liquid were the three red stones. Yes. Here they are. Please make it stop! Soon, honey. Please make it stop! Please make it stop! Strange, how 
dare you? You got your stones, Lilith. You were just torturing him for the sake of torture. Mr. Strange, you could join him with just a word from my lips. If you know as much about me as you think you do, you know you don't have that kind of power over me. She watched me, deciding to test if my statement was true. You are very arrogant. For a hairless ape. Lilith, if you think I'm hairless, you should see my chest. And I'm not arrogant. Well, maybe a little. But I do have some well-placed friends who keep me safe. So? The stories about you are true, Mr. Strange. Hm. You were hired to return my stones, which I now possess, and you were well paid. I think our business is finished, unless you can think of anything else. I didn't like that she had played me, but there was little to do about that now. Well, other than the hunk of rotting meat in the chair and the burnt carcass on the floor, I'd say it's a wrap. I will call on you again some day. Feel free to call on me if you think of anything you might want. When she looked at me like that, I felt a rush of blood run to the part of my body that makes it hard to think about anything in a rational way. I wanted to reach out to her and hold her, fall in love with her follow her anywhere she wanted me to go. And then the sight of the putrid mass of tripe on the floor brought me back to reality. I don't know if I could afford one of your markers, Lilith. Perhaps one day we will find some mutually beneficial arrangement? Perhaps. What about these two and the others? Don't worry about that. These old warehouses have faulty wiring. <laughs> Very dangerous. They burn easier and faster than yesterday's newspaper. And with that snap, Lil and her imps were gone. The warehouse did burn that night, as did the Chinese restaurant next door and the dry cleaners next to that. They blamed it on faulty wiring. About a week later, I was headed out for the night when another woman showed up in my waiting room. She was attractive, red lips, olive skin. Have you ever heard of the white lady... I sat down. It was going to be a long night. Tonight's episode, Harry Strange, number 101, Comes a Hero, was written and directed by Tony Serechia and produced by Brianne Ahern and Tony Serechia. All material is copyright by Tony Serechia and used with his permission. Featured in tonight's cast were Kellen Stenton, Parisia Johnston, Jason Tyler, Ray Saltrelli, and Sylvia Gallen. Harry's theme music was written and performed by Lance Hogan and is copyrighted by Lance Hogan and used by permission. Contact Lance at his email at haugall at yahoo.com. Incidental music was written and performed by Kevin McLeod and is copyrighted by Kevin McLeod and used by his permission. Visit harrystrange.com to keep up with the latest news and information on everyone's favorite private investigator. Send your questions, comments, and suggestions to producer at harrystrange.com. For the Harry Strange Radio Drama, I am Brianne Ahern. Thanks for listening. <laughs>